Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're taking our fourth and final look through my collection of TV and movie tie-ins and adaptations. So we start off at the letter V and then we've got a few other bits and pieces, a few particularly nice ones that have been sort of bagged up. Um, my Beatles paperbacks and related paperbacks. Then we've got a little pile of larger format, sort of B format and hardbacks, plus my range of pocket essential paperbacks. So quite a bit to get through today, which uh, I'm sure you're going to enjoy. So without further ado, sit back, relax, and let's get to it. Okay, so starting off with V, book one, this was the very first one. Now this is the British edition, so I've got a mixture of British and American. And this is the one I've had for many, many years. I doubt it's a first edition, because it was reprinted very, very heavily. Yeah, 10th printing from May 85. Um, I've not really, I'm not really too fussed about having it, but this was my original one from, from sort of back in the day. And it looks absolutely fine. It's just a bit sort of tarnished as it were. It looks like it's like a bit of an older, older copy. It's aged a bit. And this was the follow-up, wasn't it? East Coast Crisis. Not quite as massive as that first one. But I remember enjoying these immensely when they came out. I really, really did. And this is a first from uh, April 85. Once again, absolutely fine. It's just like it's got like a little bit of storage age, which is uh, going to come off fine once we get to uh, brushing these down with the brush and then the polish. This is another one, Pursuit of a Diana. I suppose you could say she was as much a star of the show as, you know, the, you know, the visitors themselves, wasn't it? It was always Diana. She was the the famous one that everyone remembers. And what was she called again? It was, um, what was her name? Jane Badler. Jane Badler, that was her name. The Chicago Conversion. I pretty much remember having all of these back in the day. All the ones that were published in the UK. There was a fair batch that didn't. And they were uh, USA only. A Florida project. But I always remember they looked really cool on the shelf. And um, I think the colour coding was possibly in response to the really colourful um, pocket Star Trek range. Which was really booming around this sort of time. Prisoners and Pawns. These are all in the English Library. It's got a little 80 pence, but it's in, uh, it's in pens, so it's not going to do much about that one, sadly. That's okay, then. Alien Swordmaster. I bet there's people watching this thing, oh, I remember having that one, and you recognise the, the covers. It's hard to believe just how many actually got published in the end. It's a testament to quite how popular the series was, that so many came out. But yeah, not all of them in the UK. So I think this may actually be the last British one I've got, because after that they appear to be all American. So the New England Resistance. Yes, that's all my British ones, so I guess we'll give these a brush down now. Make myself a little bit more room here so I can get the brush in. And as you can sort of see on these, it's just like a little bit of surface modelling. A bit of dust from all the years they've been sort of in my collection. Because I have had these since the 80s, since they were published. Very much enjoyed V when it first came out. I remember staying up incredibly late. I was at school at the time and I stayed up really late because over here, I think it was 1984, they were playing the after the Olympic coverage had finished. So it was after the LA Olympics had finished. So it was often going on until at one, two o'clock in the morning, which is not ideal if you were <laughs> supposed to be getting up for school the next day. But you know how it is? Right, 
Well, I thought there'd be quite a bit more dust coming off these, but they don't seem to be that dusty. They just seem to have like yellowed a bit, you know, yellowed with age. But that's okay. It's okay. Well, that's that pile. Let's get these American ones looked at. So, Pursuit of Diana. That's got quite a heavy cover sticker, which would be nice to think we could possibly get that one looking a bit better. Very, very aged. Look how toned and aged that is. But that is often the case with American editions. Death Tide. But some of these I have a feeling, well, certainly in the UK, but I have a feeling they're quite scarce to get just in general. Um, you know, some of these are quite harder, quite hard to track down. The Texas Run. I remember a couple when I tried to find the last few, I had to import them myself. Couldn't find any copies in the UK. I think this is one of the hard ones, Path to Conquest. Obviously published at the, uh, the tail end of the series. It was the second series, wasn't it? Which was a bit more episodic rather than mini series. Which once again, I, I enjoyed it, but you know, a lot of people did slate it and it wasn't as high quality. So we've gone from pinnacle books, three pinnacle books, and then I've got these rest, these final few are tour books. Oregon Invasion. I say it's quite incredible to think that there was quite this many um, V books. Below the Threshold. I haven't read them all, but I've read possibly about half of them. And that's got a little bit of pencil inside. It says first US paperback, £3.50. So this has obviously come from a British dealer at some point. I may have picked it up at a show, one of the NECs, something like that. I was always on the lookout for V memorabilia in books and stuff. There isn't a lot ever made, really. In the UK, we had a colouring book and an annual, and I think a storybook, as I recall, and then these paperbacks. But that was about it. I know in the States, you had the figure. There was a V-gun, and there was a few other bits and pieces, but really, it was a series which amazingly didn't have a lot of memorabilia. Um, Symphony of Terror. And I should be sad to see this series, um, Cleaning My Movie Times, come to an end because I've really, really enjoyed uh, going through them. And I hope you've enjoyed watching me go through them as well because, as I said, they've always been quite a big part of my collection. And I still pick them up to this day. I found one uh, literally yesterday in Hay on Y. Um, my first Hay on Y video where I visit the book barn and... Um, the cinema bookshop that particular video is going up tomorrow on my other channel so if you're interested to see that and i picked up a fantastic hammer movie tie-in of she so uh but that won't actually be in tomorrow's video but it's in the one the week after because i didn't pick it up in the bookshop the first two bookshops we visited in hay but i picked it up in one a bit later in richard booth's So I am still on the lookout for really nice groovy movie times if they come my way. Right, so that's that pile done. So now we've got a, oh, speaking of hammer, we've got two, uh, two tines. Well, not tines. This is, um, that is the movie tine to The Vampire Lovers, which was a tail end, um, well, I say tail end. It was like 1970, wasn't it? Um, hammer movie. One of their more risque ones, shall we say. Um, based on this novel here, which is, this is an American copy of Carmilla. This is the original sort of novel. This one was a Scholastics one, so I guess it's like um, possibly written for uh, young adults. Also 1971, so around the time of the movie, in actual fact. Um, so that's those two. The West Wing. 
One of my all-time favourite series, to be honest. I absolutely love The West Wing. It's in my top five, and I tend to re-watch the whole series in its entirety once every two to three years. Um, very much enjoyed the Listen Through, the West Wing Weekly, which was a, a podcast with... Um, uh, which recently came to a close about a year ago. Um, Westworld, this has had a little revival, and for a while, this particular movie time paperback was going for big money. I don't know if it still is. I think it's probably unlikely, but it's got a nice photo insert. Great, great movie, the original one. There we are, published March 1974. Really, really great. Well, it's just the American edition, but it's got a 40p like little over stamp there, which means it's been imported at some point. This is a nice sort of period horror tie in to Witchfinder General. So, Vincent Price, Ian Ogilvy, Wilfred Bramble, that's um, Steptoe. <laughs> bit of page edge. In fact, this one's been got wet at one point. No, it's all the same. So, yeah, I'm not going to throw that one away. Well, this is one of those ones which uh, sort of crosses over into the realm of um, softcore porn. <laughs> Xavier meets Marilyn Shape. I think these are both sort of pin-up models. And uh, this is some sort of faintly veiled tie-in. 1977. Look at the list of books by Xavier. Look, there's loads of them. The Happy Hooker. Well, you get the idea. You get the idea. Very, very scarce, those books. And if you ever see them, definitely worth uh, worth picking up. Now, my next little batch is actually my Beatles paperbacks. Um, so we'll give these two piles a brush down. And then I think we better make a little bit of room. Let's make some space. Right. One of my favourites. Help. Now, this is the American Dell. I've had these uh, for a long, long time. These Beatles paperbacks are really big fan of the Beatles. And I still am to this day. But there's no price inside. I wonder when these date from. 1965. It's got the a Beatles, the Beatle book. That's a pretty groovy back cover there. Amazing to think as we film this, literally last weekend, Paul McCartney played Glastonbury at the age of 80 and uh, knocked him dead. He was joined on stage by Bruce Springsteen and uh, Dave Grohl. Cellar full of noise. Some photos in. This is Brian Epstein, he was their manager, of course. Yeah, by the man who discovered the Beatles. Good stuff. Here's the American edition of A Hard Day's Night. The British edition was published in Pan, so that's in my Pan collection. Um, I own, it was by John Burke, and I actually own John Burke's original contract with Pan to write this particular movie tie-in. How cool is that, eh? Nineteen sixty-four, and this was a Dell, a Dell as well. Then I've got these two, which were um, in these like plastic paperback mylars, which is why they weren't in the usual sort of spot. So this is the American Signet edition to Yellow Submarine. Glorious, glorious film. One which I was delighted that my children enjoyed when they were growing up. Absolutely fantastic. There we are, 1968, October 68. 
for that one. Now we'll leave it out of the bag because we're going to give it a polish. And I've also got the, uh, the British edition, which is very similar. This is New English Library, slightly different cover. Um, I think they're both equally as scarce. Inside, they're, they're virtually identical, as you can see. Just brilliant, brilliant stuff. There we are, August 68. Superb, aren't they? They're really, really nice. What a pair that is. Um, quite collectible as well, as you would imagine. It's the Beatles. Um, really minter copies of 15 to 20 pound a pop on those ones. So uh, if you ever see them in virtually any shape, do pick them up because uh, if you don't, you'll be dipping out. So let's give these two Dells, which are short, a brush first of all. Had those Beatles books for a long time and none of them have ever been cleaned but in actual fact on the surface they're not actually that you know d dirty really or grubby but they're not going to hurt from a little polish and a brush off the end of the top here because even books that I've had from you will benefit from that there we are so we'll give those a, a clean in a little while Next then, well, we might as well do, because they're smaller format, we do this uh, series of pocket essentials. So I bought all of these brand new. And in fact, you see that little sticker there, Purple Haze. That was uh, um, my shot back in the in the 90s into the very early 2000s. And when did these come out? This is 2002. Um, so I picked up a little run of these. That's actually quite, that really is super dusty on the front. So these are going to benefit a bit from a, um, a wipe down, but I'll show you some of the other ones I've got in my collection. So we've got Michael Mann, one of my favourite directors, really like Michael Mann, Oliver Stone. Obviously, these are a little bit out of date because they're only um, up to that point in the uh, in the person's career, uh, like Ridley Scott there. The uh, artist and writer Robert Crumb. Roger Corman, great, great director. This is the uh, guide to the pocket guide to the carry on film. So that's OK, because they're all in there, because, of course, it came out afterwards. Quentin Tarantino, look at Quentin's films. I said a lot of them are revolving around um, uh, movies, TV and movie series. This is the Jackie Chan one, a great art great actor comic book writer Alan Moore how cool is that very very good You've got the Clint Eastwood one was a really good one looking at his career because he didn't do a lot after sort of the the early 2000s so that has got pretty much his entire career in so uh, on George Lucas Hammer Horrors or Hammer Films in general not just the horror ones. Heroic Bloodshed. This is a non-glossy cover, but it's uh, a bit more of an unusual one. That a lot of uh, films you may not have heard of. Simpsons. Quite a nice one. Very nice design on that one as well. Don't see that one very often. Uh, Spielberg. Pocket Tintin. Video games, pretty cool that one. Nice, uh, nice uh, look at the history of video games. That's cool. And the last one, and one of my favourites, was uh, looking at Vietnam War movies. Great stuff. Good little series. So let's give them a cursory brush down. Yeah, you don't see them anymore. They're all out of print now, of course. Um, and the thing was, they would get. I think some of them got updated, but they would just go out of date on the more sort of up-to-date or recent sort of directors and people like that. So the books weren't sort of current, but I always thought, you know, I could probably do one myself on a subject. And I seem to remember they were looking for submissions at the time. You know, you could say, well, I'd like to do the pocket essential on such and such. And they'd uh, potentially commission you to write one. You know, I don't think they paid much, but... 
would have been quite cool, wouldn't it, to say I wrote a pocket essential. There we are. Right, so now I want a few of my uh, more unusually shaped books. Actually, we're not, you know, because I have actually got two more A formats to do, which were slightly out of line, and that's my um, two Survivors books. So, who remembers Survivors, the, uh, the Terry Nation series that he did before Blake 7? I'm a huge, huge fan of it, and there was two paperbacks. Um, this one is the first one by Terry Nation. This was um, sort of season one, except the ending is is completely different to what was televised. Um, these are not bad copies. Um, the second one's harder to find than the first one here. Um, they've both been signed by uh, Caroline Seymour, who was um, uh, Abby Grant in the TV show. And this is the much much harder to find second one, Genesis of a Hero, which isn't bad. It's got all, all the sort of familiar characters. And those two are not bad at all. I will give them a very cursory polish, very, very carefully. Obviously, I don't want to um, take off the signatures or anything, but a little dust off won't hurt. Um, as I said, they've been bagged in, the, uh, in those paperback milers, so they should be pretty good. Okay, so this is a fun one that I've had in my collection an awful long time. It's uh, a little cartoon book published by Piccolo, which was Pam Books' sort of junior imprint. It's little little cartoon strips. And I, I've often wondered if these had appeared in a kid's comic or if possibly if they appeared in one of the Nationals. I'm just having a little look here. No, it doesn't actually say if they were first printed anywhere else. But quite a nice little item that for the Dad's Army Collector. Um, now, that's just the one one book in this slight oblong shape, so I shall brush it off with the toothbrush, which has not been retired. It just doesn't get so much usage as it used to. Sorry, toothbrush. <laughs> I've got two big little books. Uh, one of these is for the man from Uncle, the other one's for the invaders. And the Uncle one's sort of fallen into my hand first of all. That's got a little 50 cents inside, so I'll gently get this out because the paper that these are printed on is not the greatest. So I'm gently rubbing this one way to get it out. like so. So, like a typical big little book, you've got a picture on one side and the story on the other. It's quite a nice one, this. Don't see that many of them in the UK, to be honest. And here's the, uh, the one for the invaders, Alien Missile Threat. It's a little list of the other ones they did on the back there. Look some of there, look in the back there, look, I Spy, The Green Hornet, Bonanza. I don't think I've seen the I Spy one. This one's in better condition than The Man From Uncle. Quite a nice little one, that. I used to have quite a run of the um, 30s and 40s big little books. I had about 20 of them. Um, some really, really beautiful condition ones, but uh, sadly I had to let them go. I can't keep it all. With hardbacks, it's always sort of in the uh, top of the spine there, where it um, catches the most sort of dirt. But yeah, in comparison, the Uncle one, compared to the Invaders, is uh, 
much, much lower grade, but it's okay. It's okay. Right. So on to the B format books. Now these are slightly larger, uh, B format or even C's. This is um, the first of a handful of books I've got on um, Tony Hancock. I'm a big, big fan of Tony Hancock, the radio TV series rather than the radio series rather than the TV series or his movies. Um, some of the TV ones are pretty good, um, but they're usually ones that have been adapted from a, a radio script to begin with. So I never really had a look at these all together. So this was first published in 74 and this Futura paperback in 75. Is that another £2.50? Yeah, that's probably, probably what I paid for it when I found this one. Very, very much enjoy Tony Hancock. One thing I am after is um, some Tony Hancock Radio Times covers, but they're very, very scarce. I haven't seen one turn up f you know, in over a year, so uh, they'll probably go for a fortune if they were to uh, were to turn up online. Another one, really well illustrated, which is good. I suppose he had lots of photos taken for uh, the Radio Times. So this one's 1975, a little 99p inside. I wonder if that's when he sort of, when they started releasing the LPs, the BBC LPs, because he was big in the, obviously in the 50s and 60s. And then he must have gone off the ball a little bit, probably when he died, because there was no new material coming out. And then I guess he must have had a revival when the BBC started doing their classic episode LPs. And certainly towards the end of the 70s, early 80s, that's when I had those BBC records, but I had them on cassette. And that's when I first started enjoying Hancock and old radio shows in general, to be honest. And uh, they're all beautifully remastered and archived on BBC box sets these days. And if you're not too fussed about having those with all the notes and extras and stuff... If you go online, because of their age now, they're like 70 years old, you can often pick up off eBay um, a CD with the entire run on everyone, which is uh, very, very convenient. Another one here. Um, this one's a bit later. This is Aerial Books, which I'm not really sure of, and BBC. So obviously I know BBC Books, but I don't know Aerial. So this one looks like it's sort of 80s. It's a bit more substance to it rather than just... Dozens and dozens of pictures like the earlier ones. When was this published? 1986. Yeah. Oh, it says first published by Coronet. So it's like a re release. It's like a reissue. There we are. So I didn't know that. I've got at least two or three hardback Hancock books as well in my collection. Right. This is a Whitman. TV hardback. So these are American and I've got a few of these but this Invaders one I have the the American edition and this one which is the Dutch version of it. Invasion von der Wiege. <laughs> and I, I think it's the same story. I, I can't imagine it's, it's anything different than the one that we're looking at here. So let's clean the uh, American one first if indeed it does need a clean. So I recently picked up the Whitman Star Trek one of these which has taken me quite a while to get but I was very pleased to get it because it's uh, super scarce as a first edition although it did get re-released in the uh, in the UK um, by Pocket Books which was actually the first time it ever came out in Britain. But that'll be with my sort of Star Trek videos down the line. Have this invaders on for an awful long time. Even this Dutch one here I've had for ages. It's got some stills in, that's quite nice isn't it? In 1970 this one's dated, so a little bit after the American show, probably when it finally got out to the Netherlands. See there's a, like a mark along the top there, 
which will benefit from a bit of uh, polish. There we are. And I think I'll just give these Hancock books a rub down as well while we're here, just so everything's had a brush while we're at it. Then all we'll need to do is the uh, the polishing. Okay, now we've got a couple more here. These are my last two Whitman hardbacks, and these are for Mission Impossible. That's the pair. I don't believe there's any more than the two. Um, so this is the slightly earlier one, because it's still got, uh, what's it called, Roland Hannah, Martin Lando and Barbara Bain in. And this later one um, has got Leonard Nimoy in. So it's a couple of different teams. 1969, this one. But I can't imagine there's much date-wise between the two of them. Okay, let's have a look at this one. Nineteen seventy, yeah, so it's only a year apart. Neither of them have any uh, writing inside, which is good, but they are quite dusty along the top, so I'm gonna to need to do them so one at a time. Just get the toothbrush in the, the grooves there. Showing a bit more sign of aging. No, it's okay. Okay, so I knew, I knew I had a porridge hardback, and I couldn't remember which one it was. So it's uh, another stretch of porridge. Um, I really don't know why this one is separate because this is such a like normal hardback, I guess it should be with my normal hardback books because I've got some others which are sort of BBC published books like a Grain, Grain Shield Stories, for example, which should be with with this one. So it's interesting though that first published 76, this edition published 1977. So even this is not a first, but it's okay with me. <laughs> Not too bad dust-wise, just a little bit here and there. Obviously I won't be putting really any polish on this one, but I might just put the damp duster across the back, see if it pulls up a little bit of the, uh, the white sort of marks that are on it. This one was probably a bit of a scarcity, Fletcher's Book of Rhyming Slang. Oh dear, look. it's come away, the glue has come away. So we'll have a little look at it without. Yeah, the glue's just dried, dried out on it. So it says a pan original. Okay. So, very much the glue has died to death on it. Now what do we do? Well, any other surface bits we'll just get off first of all. But you can see there where the glue is literally just like falling off in pieces. make an awful mess okay so best way to approach this really although 
there's still glue in here. I'm going to just put more Pritt stick over the top of it. I really don't think that's going to hurt. And then I'm going to be very generous putting some on the, the spine here. Just to bind the two bits together. Make sure I've got it around the right way. A very, very thin book. But I don't think it's particularly valuable, but it might take you a while to, to track one down. I don't know. I've not really checked porridge books on the online. There we go. That'll be absolutely fine. That will dry off and uh, solidify and do the trick. Now we've got a little run of Red Dwarf books. So I knew I had more Red Dwarf. I just couldn't remember. I didn't realise that they were all B formats. So uh, this was the Omnibus, which is the first couple of books, I think, put together. A lot of the early books are just script books, of course. So it's got a bit of a uh, foxing inside. The quiz book. Once again, these are going to really benefit from uh, a good polish. So you think you're a Red Dwarf fan? Well, I couldn't possibly say. Oh, look, someone's filled it in. That's not my handwriting. But quite nice to have a little uh, flyer in there. Son of Soup. The second servant of the least worst scripts. <laughs> Ah, oh, great show this, Red Dwarf. 96. Difficult to believe it's uh, so old now, isn't it? These are like 25 plus years old. Ah, oh, so this, is, this was the one before. This is Primordial Soup, and that was Son of Soup. So this is one that came out a bit before. During the Red Dwarf craze, you could say. Of the mid-90s. And then we've got two books on uh, tomorrow's world so uh that was the, the bbc science program looking ahead to the future there was the main presenter initially it was raymond baxter and james burke i believe and michael rod joined them and it was the woman wasn't it judith Hahn, was it I'm not sure how common these are. I've actually got a, a Tomorrow's World Annual as well, or a large format book from this period. There's Michael Burke. I remember loving it as a kid, Tomorrow's World. I absolutely loved it. A little bit on the faded side, but I'm not, I'm not sure how easy it would be to find those paperbacks these days. But let's uh, give these last few uh, a brush off. So overall, not a lot of repair work in any of these, but I've, I think almost all of them are going to really benefit from having a polish, which I don't think a lot of these have well, would never have had, you know. Never in their lifetimes. Yeah, nice uh, Nice lightning of those two, much, much better than what they were. Excellent. Right, so. Right, we're back to V. Start of the alphabet. Or maybe the end of the alphabet. But I've got a nice new fresh clean cloth. Got my can of Mr. Sheen here. Ready for action. Let's get that first corner impregnated. And let's uh, let's get to work. So I'm expecting big things from these V-books because I'm sure really in a lot of cases it's just dust that's on them. And they're going to come up absolutely gleaming and they already are straight away. Because it's just like surface dust that's accumulated over all these years. And when the books are generally quite mint to begin with, which these aren't bad, 
the polish will really pick it up. So that book, which looked really nice, look at that. That's just off the one book. So that gives you a little idea of uh, the difference that we're making here. As I said I've had these all my life since they were published. They've been carted around from house to house, bedsit to bedsit, flat to flat, and uh, ended up in my my collection over all these years. Wow, we look at the state of it. You wouldn't believe it from two books that were generally quite mint, but now you look at them, they look fantastic. They really do look good. It just shows what a difference this this process can make on your uh, book collection. immediately vanished which is cool of course these ones here have got highly glossy surfaces so they're very very easy to uh, to clean up the dirt just sort of falls off them but already I'm going to need to use a fresh bit of duster because those four books have resulted in that, which is incredible, isn't it? So let's move on down. Of course, they won't all be this bad, but certainly some of these are going to be. dirt on the back. This is a bit of a tattier one. And it did have a bit of a sticker residue mark, so I put the first little bit on. Leave that soaking for a moment. It's got most of it off, which is fine, isn't it? There we are. That's all right. It's a tiny book to begin with, to be honest. <laughs> and I think. You know, these books ideally haven't been in the, stored in the very, very best environment. But they do say a nice, cool, dark place is a, is a great place to put your books. Now, there is very much a case for bagging everything to stop the books and basically the pages ageing. And I suppose it's something that I wouldn't rule out completely, but 
I think just the thought in my head of having to bag the whole lot from scratch, my entire collection, is a little bit daunting. But I think, I do think eventually that's what I'm going to do. Um, because once they've been through this book process, that's sort of the last thing that needs to be done, is just to sort of bag the books up one last time before they're uh, stored away. Because, I mean, I'll only take a... If it's a book that I want to read, I'll only take a moment to dig it out, won't it? So uh, I think that is something I am going to look at doing um, down the line. Because ultimately, I've seen books that have been stored bagged up. And um, yeah, there's very much a case for them uh, not yellowing so badly over time, you know? So, uh, of course, the thing is with a lot of my stuff, it's already historical by the time I've got it. <laughs> If I'm picking up books from, say, the uh, 1930s or 40s, they're already 80, getting on 90, getting on 100 years old. So by that time, the books have already gained, uh, you know, they've already started to age, sometimes dramatically. So uh, it is what it is, isn't it? There's not a lot you can do about it. The ravages of time. is coming off these that may not be that easy to see but believe me they come out very very nice um, this particular one had some nicotine staining on the side on the spine but apart from that it was a beauty splodge of something on the back here so I'm getting that off it's taking a bit of elbow grease it has come up absolutely beautiful now but it wasn't like that to begin with onto the American ones now this one's another one which has got a sticker mark, but a sticker mark which has got some tears on it, sadly. But that's okay, it's not going to make a big difference. I've just literally put my cloth on the first bit of it. I'll do the rest of the book first. Okay, right. Is it gonna pick up a little bit of it? Yeah, it looks like it is. Yeah, so it's picking up basically the glue that was left is picked up. Obviously you can see where the book had been, the label had originally been torn off and unfortunately there's nothing I can do about that. But I think you'll agree that looks better than the big sticker that was there to begin with. Rapidly running out of room here. <laughs> Can actually get away with this cover. You, look, incredible amounts of dirt and it's a clean spot. <laughs> These really have cleaned up very very well and uh, I think the reason we've taken so much dirt off them is because you know I've just had them since they were published so it's 85 you know so they're very very much of a historical nature. <laughs> it is as simple as that. It's 
quite nice so we won't need to do a lot on this just the surface gunk you can see and it's highlighted even more so because it's a black cover always difficult to find in top condition Putting a little, just a little freshening square on, and then rub the cloth in. soon before next week's show <laughs> so as I said we've come to the very end of the uh, the TV and movie tie-ins now but I've uh, well at least for now these are like the miscellaneous ones and we do have the Doctor Who's and Star Trek's which are kept separately so we'll do those in good time but um, next week then we're gonna go back to um, the pan books because we've not uh, done those for ages and the week after that we're going to do some vintage penguins because once again we've not done any for ages and we're on to the very interesting period with the penguins because we're at the very super scarce and fragile wartime releases which are uh, honestly they're just I don't want the videos to be three hours long but they could be <laughs> now see this one's got some paint on the back but that can't do anything about that it's like a bit of emulsion not the end of the world, and here is the last V book Symphony of Terror. Okay, so we've got my two big little books. And uh, once again, these I do not want to spray directly on them because they're very, uh, very, very light. They're not, they're sort of like cardboardy covers. They're not gonna be, there's no gloss to them. So I'm just putting a very, very thin sort of layer on just to take off any obvious bits of dust, which is what this will do, dust and dirt. But not a lot can be done on either of these, sadly. But they're not too bad anyway. You know, they are what they are. But yeah, very, very treading lightly on those ones. And the same with this one in actual fact, because this is also one which has not got a glossy cover. So I'm just being very careful and only rubbing where I can see marks. It's been read a few times, but it is it's a scarce one, this, I think. It's a sticker mark on the back, which is uh, coming off with a bit of elbow grease. There we are. Let's get rid of that one. That's good. Lovely. So we'll slip those 
unusual sized books up there. And then we'll zip through my collection of pocket essentials. Now, these aren't going to take a lot because basically it's just like a surface layer of dust and dirt, which I'm just going to run the cloth over. I don't think any of them have got much more than that, but if we do spot anything, we'll obviously uh, we'll stop and uh, grab it while we're at it. But I don't think these have got anything too bad on them. Yeah, I used to stop these in the shop back in the day. It was a very popular little series because they were dirt cheap. They were only uh, $1.99 or $2.99 a book. Which was, you know, a no-brainer really, you know. But there was an awful lot in the series and I only sort of picked up the sort of the film stroke TV ones on the whole. I got the order, like the, the video game one I picked up, for example. But I don't remember seeing any of these around in the wild for years and years, you know. I mean, I just can't remember the last time I came across one. So I wonder how well they actually sold. I don't know. I must ask my, my friend Steve Andrews, the outlaw bookseller, if he knows what happened to them, because... He himself published a couple of um, had a couple of books published, like sort of encyclopedia books on uh, best SF and best fantasy and what have you. And uh, he's still a bookseller to this day, so he would know. Ah, look at this one! Look, free with issue twenty-four of Hot Dog, which was a film magazine I recall so that was a freebie that was issued as a cover mount so maybe that was done for publicity of the series get the word out there I hope you haven't been enjoying these last few weeks worth of videos. They've certainly been brilliant fun going through all the uh, all the tie-ins, and it makes a change to just standard vintage paperbacks, doesn't it? You know. But as you know, I do collect all manner of those sorts of books, so uh, you'll always see something weird and interesting on my channel. Now, some might say, "Well, why aren't you taking off that purple hay sticker?" Well, because it was my old shop. I don't sort of want him. I, I'm sort of it's on there as a as a bit of a, a keepsake, as it were, you know, a uh, little memory of uh, the old shop from back in the day. Closed in uh, 2001 through 2002, so it's been shut for 20 years. But a lot of this stuff that I've got now came from that era, the era of purple haze. And what a time that was for collecting. It was the golden age, you could say. Although, to be honest, for a lot of things, that was even earlier in the 80, late 80s and early 90s. That's when you could still find anything if you wanted it bad enough. And when you did find it, it was usually cheap. So, uh, they were the days. So had a few little marks on the back, but they all come off very nicely. Ridley Scott, another great, great director. One of my favourites. What a shame, I don't seem to have one of these on Brian De Palma. Um, I wonder if they did one. That I would very much like to see. I wonder if it came out. I might research that when I get the editing stage. I 
This is the biggest one in the uh, in the section in the uh, collection, the Carry On Films one. This is four ninety nine, so uh, much much bigger than uh, than the regular ones in the series. Ah, look there, they, there's a big list of them on the back. So Brian De Palma, did they do him? Oh look, they did one on the Beatles. I wouldn't have minded that one. Brian De Palma, yeah, they did it. Well, that's one I might try and track down. And this one on Agatha Christie. God, I bet that would be good. One on Hitchcock. Oh, there's lots of subjects here I'd really like to pick up. I do remember the Doctor Who one, but I haven't got that one. Wow, we. There's a couple there I wouldn't mind. There's one on James Cameron. One on John Carpenter. That would be cool. The Madchester scene. Wow, we. Orson Welles, Sergio Leone, wow. Well, one on Tim Burton there, Woody Allen. I think we could safely say that they covered most big names, didn't they? And um, I think the Brian De Palma one though, I really would like to get that. He's, uh, He's one of my favourites. In fact, <laughs> he was the biggest influence and influence on Tarantino. In actual fact, was old Brian De Palma. Well, there you go. See, we're learning something. We're learning it together, which is the best way, isn't it? Lovely. So that's all them done. So all that's remaining now is the um, is the larger format books, which we shall do now. Now some of them. Of course, I'm not going to be able to do anything with because they've got covers which cannot be run over, not even carefully. But most of them are going to be all right. So let's start with the uh, Hancock. This is one of the ones I need to be careful on. So now I'm going to put some polish on to try and get some of this edge sort of yellow in. So I'm going to try and get a bit of that, but I'm going to put it on the old cloth and then just dab it in so it's not going on too thickly there we are let's just see if it can take a bit of it off now well maybe a little bit it does look as if it's almost um sun faded in a funny sort of way like the edge has been left out in the sun it has lightened it a little bit but not a massive amount but that's okay that's a little bit better And this back it's just like got age related muck on it really and it's, it's cleaning up quite nicely because generally the book was in pretty nice condition yeah that's not bad and maybe down the side there Not really sure what the little black mark is, but unfortunately, it ain't going nowhere. <laughs> there we are, that's all right. Now, this one has got a highly reflective glossy surface, so we're okay to put a bit on neat, as it were. still pouring down with rain so I'll have to make a bit of a mad dash from the studio back to the house because I filmed this one right in the middle of the garden basically where I've built this glorified shed which I call my studio but it is very very handy to have all my lighting equipment set up and it's as dry as a as a bone in here and um, there's no echo which is what was uh, driving me around the twist filming in, in the house, you know. So very much appreciate this uh, 
environment that had a little tiny bit of sticker on the back which we've just just got that off that's brilliant that's a bit of a wasn't the world's best copy of this one to be honest but it's come up all right it's come up okay now these ones I need to be quite careful on. They have got on the surface, they seem quite glossy, but I know for a fact that, you know, if you treat these the wrong way, they're not, not going to do very well. But if you see the actual, inside the wording of the invaders there, it's actually quite sort of, it's like a layer of dust and dirt. So on the face of it, this is a really nice copy, but I believe that, um, with a little bit of gentle rubbing it should come up even better than what it is because a lot of it is just not really visible to the eye unless you were sat where I am but that to me is, is a definite improvement you know so as I said you need to be super careful with these they're not exactly glossy this Dutch one however is it's got a highly glossy surface there's a little bit there yellowing down the spine that's absolutely fine to uh, put my polish straight on I'll find a clean bit of cloth here again down this end and that's got that bit of whatever it was a bit of price label off straight away You can almost see it sort of lightening up, can't you? Once again, I hope you can see it at home. But if not, don't worry. Try to take my word for it. <laughs> Very yellowed spine. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do much about that. But the back cover is coming up lovely, which is all that we were really worried about. lovely jubbly now this one had the, this is the one that had the mark on the top so I'm giving that a rub and yeah, it's come straight off and it also went over the edge on both angles so we do the bit that's over the edge here and that's come straight off and then I'll use this other one as a as a base just along the top there Very, very difficult to get my cloth in, but I'm using a bit of fingernail. Something's been splashed on it, historically. There we are, that's got it off. And you just see that little, little sort of line there. So now, that mark that was on the top edge is, uh, has completely gone. Mr. Sheen, you've done it again. All right. Our mission, should we just choose to accept it, is now to clean these two Mission Impossible books. Now, these are the same scenario as the Invaders books in that we can't put the polish directly on. So we're treading with extreme care. There's a little mark there on that one. I'm not sure if it's going to come off, but we're going to have a little look. No, it's not. So I'm just going to gently over the surface here, which is all you can really get away with on these. They were mass produced with very, very cheap paper. And uh, when you know that, you know that you can't go to town giving them the buff of the century. It's just not going to happen. So I'm just cursory once over to get any sort of surface dirt off and then we'll call it a day on that one. So no more on them, but they're absolutely fine as is. Um, same situation for the, the porridge book. Um, it's got some, like it's got that white mark there. If you overdo it, I'm gonna wreck, wreck the cover. So I'm not gonna really go for it. Just running it over like this is taking off some of the surface dirt. And 
this back cover here will be a bit of an example. We'll see how this one comes up. Well, on the face of it, it's not made a big difference, to be honest. But I'm going to live with it. I'm not going to take any sort of risk whatsoever on that. Here's our book of rhyme and slang. This is another one which hasn't got a glossy cover. So, once again, looks like it was produced on the cheap. By the look of it, with the glue that fell to bits. <laughs> my copy certainly has seen uh, seen better days. So maybe it's one I'll pop on my list as ones to upgrade down the line. I'll keep an eye out for it at least, you know. That's okay. It's taken quite a bit off, actually, that. More than I thought it would. That's kind of really black. So that's actually not too bad. And then, well, we've got Red Dwarf. Well, it's cold outside and there's no kind of atmosphere. So let's get these last Red Dwarfs done. We can be generous because these are 90s glossy glossies and these are not too bad anyway, to be honest. They've just got little surface wear. She's gonna this is going to really bring these back up to uh, back up to scratch. It's been ages since I've watched any Red Dwarf. I must uh, must put a few of my favourites on. But at the moment, there seems to be so much new stuff. I've not. Uh, that I need to get through before I start something new. Just saying. <laughs> well, I do hope you've enjoyed this episode of going through my TV and movie adaptations. There's been some cool stuff on display, I'm sure you'll agree. I've certainly enjoyed going through it, very much so. And uh, as I said, we do have more to go, but they're gonna be the larger format books is gonna be the Star Trek and the Doctor Who. Oh, and the Star Wars, still all them to do as well. So maybe there'll be a fifth part down the line. Uh, but for now, we're gonna, next week we're gonna go back to box of old pans and then we've got a, another box of old penguin or penguin related stuff so uh, look out for that in a week's time thank you very much for watching today if you've not already do please hit that subscribe button and help me get to uh, a thousand subscribers when I promise to stop nagging you <laughs> And I shall look forward to seeing you again in a week's time. We've got another load of books to do. Look at that. Bye. <laughs>